Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with my friend Mireya Gist. Hi. <laughs> we are here to interview a very special guest. She has been on Cultish. She has a film coming out called Dark Holler and that will be in the description below. And we'll be talking about how she was doing witchcraft and all this dark occult stuff and how she was delivered from that. So we'll be getting into her whole testimony. And Mireille and I are going to have a great time being able to not be pastors here. We're not <laughs> pastors. We're just having someone share her testimony. She is newly saved, and we are just excited to be able to hear her story. So without further ado, it's my honor and privilege to welcome North Marie. North, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we're blessed because um, we heard your podcast episode that you did with Cultish. And mm -hmm. so you're explaining how you got um, delivered or an exorcism is what they called it. And so we're going to be talking about that today. But um, also we want to just meet a was the one who really found you. And she was she actually <laughs> used to be like reformed and all that. So they mm -hmm. I remember in the podcast, they were talking a lot of how it was very like. No, they're not used to that. Like, they're not used to hearing about exorcisms and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, for us here at Calvary, we're, we're used to that. Like, we're used to, we believe that Christians can't be possessed, which meaning, like, a demonic spirit living inside yeah. of them, but being oppressed, like, a monkey on their back is, like, the picture we can say where they're getting tormented. And, like, so we want to talk about your story, and we're really excited for that. We already prayed ahead of time, but... Um, <laughs> We can never pray too much, so I think we'll just pray again. I'll pray again because we just want to be able to welcome the Holy Spirit in our conversation. So, yes. Sure, absolutely. Dearly Father, I just thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for North God that she is here with us. And I just pray right now against the enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy to cause problems or distractions. We just pray right now that we will just welcome your presence, that everything we say, God, will be from you, not from ourselves or anything to boast about what we know, God, but we know that we know nothing. We are so wicked and so foolish, God, but you are so powerful that you can do all things, God, and you can expose the dark areas in our life. So I just pray right now that you will be glorified, that we won't be praising all the weird um, demonic in that realm, but knowing it's real. We know it's real, but we know that you are so powerful, God, and that you can conquer all of that and we just thank you so much for this time we have with North. Thank you for her life. Thank you for her story. Pray that you'll just give us peace right now that surpasses all understanding mm -hmm. and a joy and that your people right now will just hear what you need to speak to them, God, um, through her story. So we just give you this time. We ask this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. So let's start with your upbringing. Where were you born and just what was that like growing up? I was actually born in Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. and then my family moved as soon as I was, as soon as my mom had me, they moved to uh, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm raised in Boone County, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, Josh, uh, Pastor Josh talks about Logan County, West Virginia, um, in Dark Holler and on Coltish. So Logan is actually, Boone County is in the middle of Logan and Charleston. Mm -hmm. So, and it's such a small town. So, um, but my family was from Logan, oh. Logan and Mann area. So, uh, so then we made our way down like towards Boone County. Um, in, uh, in Dark Holler, uh, we actually go to where my mom, uh, was raised mm -hmm. in this house that everybody who's been in that house says that they would wouldn't even spend the night in this wow. house like it's mm -hmm. it's extremely haunted um my papa was actually pushed down the stairs in that house mm -hmm. um yeah like a lot of things has happened in the house wow. so we went back there and uh it was it was crazy but um i'm from boone county and um i really didn't grow up in church at all. Mm. Um, I avoided it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that, you know, it was very hypocritical, mm. um, which I was, you know, blinded a lot too. So, um, but I avoided church growing up. I wasn't raised in church. Um, when I was a teenager, I started getting into, uh, witchcraft mm. 
and it, it's just just something that kind of came natural to me mm. um i had a black figure that would follow me around uh from as long as i could remember my whole childhood mm. um and normally people would be like well <laughs> you know was you ever scared yeah. <laughs> well no because it happened mm. since I could remember, oh, so I wow. think it was just something that I thought was normal. Mm. You know, I was used to it. Mm. Um, but I started getting into witchcraft, and now that I think about it, I think that, um, well, I know that the, the black figure had everything to do with that. Because mm. uh, there was nobody who really um, introduced me to, to witchcraft. Mm. Mm. Uh, I did find out that there was uh, some witches in my family mm. on my mom's side. Yeah, um, that have performed witchcraft and stuff. But I, was I introduced to it? No. Mm. Uh, this is something that just kind of came natural to me. And I thought that this is what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to be a witch. Wow. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, growing uh, when I started getting into witchcraft, uh, from there, that's when, you know, I found that uh, I had some uncles that mm. that practiced uh, witchcraft mm. and um, and they came out of it, thank mm. God. Yeah. Um, but it's such a huge, a lot of myself I have found out through getting like digging deeper when we started Dark Holler. Mm. Um, and can you explain what that is for people who don't know, like when they hear yes. the word dark? <laughs> yeah, dark holler. Yes, Dark Holler is the docu series mm. of. Uh, my life and my deliverance, yep. uh, God delivering me out of witchcraft and um, my baptism. My baptism yep. wasn't a regular baptism. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> I kind of shook a lot of people. <laughs> it opened up doors of rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, um, but that's what Dark Holler is. Dark Holler yep. is the is the documentary and what was that why was that title because you had said that was at the house or where you grew up or um well it just kind of fit yeah i think ward just kind of came up with dark i'm not exactly sure maybe um just because west virginia yeah. is there's a million hollers everywhere i mean yeah. every everywhere is a holler yeah. <laughs> um it's very so I you're saying it's very dark in West Virginia and just like in general so yeah. like witchcraft and mm -hmm. that isn't weird mm -hmm. it's just very no. normal so a lot of voodoo a lot of people things? know of it at, oh I'm sorry no you're I was just saying is there a lot of voodoo is that what goes on over there voodoo um in the Appalachia region um it's known as Appalachia folk magic mm -hmm. um uh hillbilly hoodoo mm -hmm. um <laughs> It's it's more of um, manipulating things, mm. um, like uh, from a person's a personal um, something personal that a person has. Mm -hmm. You could take that mm -hmm. and manipulate that mm. into doing you know whatever your your spell or your spell jar, you know whatever mm. you're wanting to do. Mm. Um, it's best to have something of that person. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. It's like kind of um, reminds me of like in other countries when they have like witch doctors and like they have all yeah. that stuff. So yeah, and, very deep in holistics yeah. and yeah, for yeah. like healing and and that's why I always mm -hmm. tell people it's like I think they we always think that okay well like because we believe like you know God can still heal and like all these things yeah. but when they see these witch doctors in people doing these things are like wow they must be the truth in the right way because you mm -hmm. even see that back with you know um moses when they were was performing the miracles and like the magicians they were able to do it but not everything they couldn't do but mm -hmm. they can yeah. mimic and that's what we need to realize mm -hmm. is like these demonic spirits they like to mimic and to appear like oh well this is so powerful like it's almost fun mm -hmm. like it's cool to be yeah. able to see like oh i can do this and um, we've heard stories of people where they'll say like, oh, I, I would say like, hey, can you ask the spirits like, hey, can you help me find something? And the thing like just drops mm -hmm. right 
from their door, like mm-hmm. what they were looking for. Or mm-hmm. What are some other examples of things that you've heard? Like, you know? Oh, um, just just the sense of power that yeah. people gain from mm-hmm. um, practicing oh, yeah. these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And it and it's a it's really deceptive because they would have you think that you're the one in control, you know, during this Absolutely. whole thing. And so it's yeah. um, it's just it's really you think freaky. that you're in control, but mm-hmm. really, mm-hmm. you know, once you get so deep into it, mm-hmm. it's controlling you. Exactly. And exactly. That's kind of what happened in my situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that, you know, I was my own God. Mm. I was uh, an eclectic witch, which is somebody who pulls from different religions and Mm. makes it their own. Mm. So I was my own God, Mm. you know, in my eyes. And yeah, I loved it. It was very um, almost like quicksand. I Mm. mean, once you get into it, you know, you're you're hooked. Mm. Can you You give some examples of things you did? Oh, sorry. What are some things that like you experienced or did that you were just like, wow, that was crazy. Like it almost maybe not freaked you out, but just like that was powerful. Like kind of like I am a God, like I can't believe. And did other people, were they shocked at the things you could do or? or Um, Well, I would know things. Mm -hmm. So I could meet, for an example, like I could meet somebody and they would just start telling me their whole life story. Uh, for me to give them, and it would always lead back to, well, you could do this, Mm -hmm. you know, some kind of spell or some kind of, you know what I mean? You could do this. I could help you with that, Mm -hmm. you know, or, um, my friends would always, like, I I could just sense things. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my best friend growing up, she said, um, you always know, like when I'm having a bad day or so she said, I'll, if I know that I'm having a bad day and my phone just randomly rings and it's you, Mm. your exact words are what's wrong. Like, is everything okay? Mm. Like I would just know things. I would have, um, dreams and they would come true. Mm. Um, if I got a bad feeling, you can bet that something bad was going to happen. Um, just things that were, I was so, what I thought was I was in tune with myself. I was in tune with Mm. the universe, you know, but, uh, no, I just, uh, really got, um, mixed up in black magic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, dark magic, it's all dark. Mm. So people hear white magic, black magic, it's all black magic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And what does that look like? Like, cause I know like the typical things that people know is like Ouija boards and then they do tarot Mm -hmm. cards and, but what did you tap into and what did that look like growing up? Um, I have done it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have pretty much done it all. Yeah, I've pretty much experienced with um, pretty much any type of anything that you could think of, really, mm. um, except for like sacrificial magic and stuff. Like I didn't mess with any of that. Mm. Uh, when it came to Ouija boards and stuff, uh, I would make my own. Mm. Oh, wow. Um, and that worked. Um, mm. I could tell you, <laughs> there was this one time that you, you asked me what, how, what was something that I had done yeah. that really kind of freaked me out? Yeah. Well, um, I had, I had, uh, perform, I had created a, a spell jar <laughs> one time and, um, it was, it was, well, it was a hex. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't do much of that, but I, I did a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'd, I would really have to be pushed to my limit to do something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, I was, and I did. Mm-hmm. And two or three days later, the person actually uh, fell and ended up getting a rusted nail um, shoved straight through their calf. Wow. And there was rusted nails in the hex jar wow so i knew then you know Mm. well that's not a coincidence Mm. um and of course i had complete you know faith that it was going to work at this time i was already so deep into it Mm. that you know i was i was sure (laughs) That's yeah, crazy. Like, when you were doing these things, um, was there any, was there a sense of fear or mm-hmm. anything? Or was it just, any it, just any conviction or just pure, just no. power, adrenaline? No, I, I absolutely loved it. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And I loved people it. around you, did they love it too? Like, it reminds me of the story, um, where was it? In, well, Acts 16, mm. 16, I think mm. I didn't have the story, but it was talking about the slave girl and she was able to, 
I think, tell people's fortunes. It was mm-hmm. kind of like that. And yep, then, yeah, sure. and so, but then when she was annoying Paul, he cast the spirit out in Jesus' name. But then her masters were mad because that's how they made, they made money. money and money. off of it. So mm-hmm. did your, is that something your friends and families, like, did you get them into it? Or did the, were you kind of like the main witch girl that did that stuff? Or did they <laughs> do that with you? Um, well, uh, I had friends, like other friends that were uh, witches. Yeah. Um, and once you got, it was something that your eyes was open to, mm-hmm. you know, that, that you was into witchcraft. It was everywhere. Mm. And you was running, I mean, just non-coincidentally running into witches. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was just something that would happen. Um, a couple of my best friends um, are witches. Um I still have good friends that are, are witches and, and they know that I'm a Christian now. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to put my testimony out there. Hey, you know, this is evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what happened to me. Amen. Um, and we just kind of respect each other's, you know, if, if opportunity pre- presents itself, we're going to have that conversation. You agree to disagree. And it will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it will. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not something I think that growing up, um, I was pushed away from Christianity, mm. um, from, from being that outcast mm. or, or not even outcast, I, I say an outcast, but, uh, being that, that person that was into witchcraft and, you know, when, when I look at it now, I think, wow, I was like the weird one. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Like <laughs> I see that, like, that's probably what people thought mm. of me. Mm. Um, so, you know, I, I respect their feelings about it. And God, it it was all in God's time, really, mm-hmm. to open my eyes and deliver me. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, I think that everything happens for a reason. Amen. So if, you know, it's in God's timing mm-hmm. and if the opportunity presents itself to, to have the conversation about why it's wrong and, and what really happened, because it's a conversation that's avoided, mm-hmm. you know. They, we don't talk about what happened to me or, or anything like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. We just agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. And so um, growing up, was that difficult for you? Because, like, did you feel rejected and stuff in areas? Because you were saying, like, well, yes, in West Virginia, like, and that stuff, mm-hmm. it was very open. But were there other areas in life? Do you feel like maybe you did love seeking after more of this stuff? Because maybe in other areas of your life, you didn't feel like you had control. So. Did that make you feel like, oh, I could take control in this? Whereas in other things, did you struggle with, like, maybe insecurity? Or did you ever struggle with, you know, a lot of people struggle with, like, um, we talked to this one girl, like, suicide, eating disorders, those things. Was that thing or was it just you were so involved with that, everything else was just didn't really struggle with growing up? I think that uh, for me it's depression Mm -hmm. and anxiety. I have, I mean, very, very bad depression. Mm. Um, and that's for me, it, it, at one point it pulled me out of that a little bit. Mm-hmm. It kind of helped me find myself, mm-hmm. um, what I thought was myself. Yeah. But, um, for, for me, it was depression. Um, I kind of left home, I left home at a very young age. Um, my parents, mm-hmm went through a divorce and they kind of, everybody just kind of went their own way and done their own thing. And, um, you know, for me, it was, uh, I rebelled. Mm. I was the partier. I was, um, the witchy girl Mm. who, you know, nobody could tell me what to do. Mm. Like I got this, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and, and that's just kind of how my, um, childhood was really. When I think about my childhood, that's what I think about mm. is mm. is the part where I was rebellious and just done whatever I wanted. And um, I think that kind of pushed me away from Christianity, too. You know, mm-hmm. everybody. Um, I, I like to rebel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't want a set of rules. Yeah. Mm. And that, at that time, you know, that's what I thought it was. Mm-hmm. You know, if you gave me a rule. I was going to break it twice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And who in your who did you know that you were close to that were Christian or did you ever go to a church growing up or what did that look like for you? Um, 
my whole family is oh, wow. is very Christian. Oh yeah. wow. Um yeah, they're very since you're little, Christians. were they? Or yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um maybe when I was really, really little, but I was so little to where I don't I don't remember mm-hmm. going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So So what would no, they say just, when they they knew you were into all this stuff? Like oh, what did yeah. they see you um, and say about it? Well, after so long, um, when I started to get really bad, uh, I, which growing up, I struggled with uh, addiction. Mm-hmm. I, I like, like I said, I like to party and stuff. Um, but I had been clean uh, for a long time after I had uh, my daughter when I got pregnant with, with Adeline. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was sober for um, a while. And then uh, when I started getting uh, you know, I started getting really depressed and, uh, started getting deeper into witchcraft Mm -hmm. and, you know, started partying again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my family, it got to the point to where, uh, I couldn't control myself. Mm -hmm. Um, it was like a light switch would just flip. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I was in the backseat of my own mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and I couldn't control the things that I was doing. Wow. And my family, and I don't remember it. Mm. Uh, my aunt said that she looked at me. Um, this was before I was baptized. Mm-hmm. She looked at me and said, uh, you know, I'll be praying for you. And that I would just, I mean, pretty much tell them off. Mm. Uh, my stepdad told, um, told me that, you know, I was never alone, that, you know, God was always with me and, mm. Um, uh, my mom said that I just, the look that I gave him mm. was evil. Mm. It was an evil. She said, and you just, you grinned your teeth and you said, I don't believe in your God. Mm. Wow. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, these things, it would just be like a light switch, mm. you know, anytime that anybody would come around me, um, that was a Christian, I would get sick. Mm. Anytime they would talk about the Bible, I would. I mean, I would get physically sick. Mm. Like I would be sick to my stomach. Um, wouldn't be able to talk about it. Didn't want to be around anybody. Want to talk about it. Mm. Um, at that time, I I thought, you know, I I can respect you as a Christian. You know, not say anything to you, but um, they couldn't stop from saying something to me mm. about mm-hmm. you know being a witch. And now I understand mm-hmm. it. You know. <laughs> But yeah, I thought that I was just the outcast and that's just how it was. I thought that that's how it was always going to be. Yeah. And what was the one story that like one time they saw you, your mom, like almost like folded over or something mm-hmm. like that? What was, what was that yeah. story like? Um, so I was at my mom's mm-hmm. and this was the night before my baptism. So I was mm-hmm. detoxing mm-hmm. at this time. I had detox. I had actually, I'd already been detoxed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a couple of days after I had detoxed and, you know, I was okay, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I wasn't okay. Mm-hmm. My mom said, you know, I have seen you come off of stuff before and it was mm-hmm. absolutely nothing like this. Yeah. She said, I have never seen anything like this before. Mm-hmm. Um, she said that it was, uh, three o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. and she woke up to me uh, in front of her fireplace and that I was completely bent up and I, I was on, she said at one point I was on my knees and it was, it was my voice and I was begging God to save my life. Wow. And the next minute it was a different voice. Mm. She said that there, it, it was not my voice. And, uh, she said, the only way that she could describe it was it was a war mm. going on inside of me. Wow. And, um, yeah. And the next day, um, she said that I was, you know, I was bent up and twisted. She said, I don't know how your arms didn't break. Wow. She, she said she's never been that scared before. Mm. And the next day, um, my, I called my aunt and I asked my aunt, to come over and to talk to me about the gospel, which at this time, that is, my mom was scared. Mm-hmm. She was like, mm, I don't think that this is a good idea. You, mm-hmm. you don't need to go in there. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm scared that she's going to hurt you. Mm-hmm. And um, 
but she came over and she talked to me about it. Mm. And uh, my sister showed up. And the last time I had seen my sister was, uh, and I don't remember this either, we had actually gotten into a huge argument mm. about um, about the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I just thought that, you know, because she was a Christian, she thought she was better than me. Mm. And so my sister ended up coming there, which was kind of not a coincidence. It was, it just kind of happened. Mm. And um, I looked, I looked at her and I said, call Josh, call pastor Josh right now. Is Josh her, her pastor? At that time. Okay. Yes. Was her pastor. Now it's, now it's our pastor. I, oh. I go to, to the same church. Gotcha. Um, but I, I told her, I said, call Josh right now. And she was like, what? Like <laughs> this was a miracle. <laughs> like everybody thought that mm. there's no way, you know, and what's the Do you the remember case? saying that or do you feel like you were just so possessed and like. I remember saying that to her, but I don't remember um, having my aunt come over and mm. talk with me and pray with me. I don't remember that. Mm. I don't remember um, the night before my mom seeing me, you know, bent up and, and I don't remember any of that. Uh, I was very in and out. Yeah. So I could remember some things and some things I couldn't. Did this mm. happen like other times when you were growing up or was it just like at this end where you started realizing you didn't have control? Like, did you feel like, is that what do you think happened? The losing control happened. Mm -hmm. um, but the the being bent up and, and twisted and yeah. different voices coming out of me, that um, that only happened um, the one time that I know of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, my mom was there to witness it, and I don't remember it. So yeah. that's the only time that I really know of. Mm. Um, but... Yeah, as soon as um, I told her to call Josh, she called Josh, and it wasn't an hour later. I was at Madison Park getting baptized in the river. Wow. <laughs> and at my baptism, I don't remember. I remember walking into the water. I remember them talking to me, and it just looked like they were glowing. Hmm. Like, it, like it was amazing. Wow. And I was just so like... They probably thought, gosh, what is really wrong? Something really is wrong with this girl. Mm. She's staring at us. Like, <laughs> like, she wants to kill us or something. Yeah. Like, I was just like hardcore staring at them mm. because they were glowing. Mm. And so I remember a little bit of them talk, them talking to me. Mm -hmm. And I remember as soon as I stepped into the water, um, I fell. Mm. And I remember uh, Josh they like they had a hold of me and Josh said, are you okay? Mm. And I said, yeah, I'm fine. He said, can you walk? And I don't remember anything after that. Mm. A lot of people, uh, had, um, questions of, did I break my foot or not? And I did. Oh. I thought out of all, out of everything going on, they're going to ask me if I broke my <laughs> foot. That's so funny. <laughs> so, oh my but goodness. yeah, I did. I broke the, um, my pinky toe and the metal tarsals on uh, my left foot. Ow. Uh, as soon as I stepped into the water. Wow. What? Oh my goodness. Yeah. It, well, I remember it felt like something pushed me. Mm. Like pushed me in. As soon as I took a step, it just felt like something pushed me. Mm. And um, I remember that it felt like I was being pulled from them. Hmm. Like, like right when they was about to take me under the water, mm -hmm. I felt a pull, like mm -hmm. almost, I can't describe it as either a pull or maybe it was hold, like trying to hold me down mm -hmm. in between there. But it was, it was scary. Like I didn't think that I was going to come back up. Wow. Um, and I remember thinking I'm not going to come back up. Wow. And then I don't remember anything after that. Wow. And whose idea was to yeah. baptize, to have you baptized after he said, call Josh? Uh, my idea. Oh, okay. Wow. That's what you said. You just said, I need to be yeah. baptized. Yeah. Oh. I said, call Josh. And she was like, why? <laughs> and I said, because I'm going to be back because I'm getting baptized. Wow. Why'd you change your mind? Like what, what made you, did you believe at this point? Um, what was it? I have no idea. <laughs> like, I really, I really don't. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it was, I had a, 
I had a spiritual war going on inside of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, one minute I would be myself and the next minute I wouldn't be. Mm. I think that, that God, that God really just, he chose to save me and that's exactly what happened and I can't explain it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so. probably you're starting to realize like this isn't fun anymore because <laughs> all growing up, right, it was fun. It was like now they even said I forgot the something they have like witch kits for kids and like things. Oh yeah. All these things because to them they teach them like witchcraft is fun and then Harry Potter and all this stuff. Like mm -hmm. you can be a witch and there's like, kind of, like, there's no problems. Like, it's only good things yeah. when you're a witch. But yeah. I think it what happened is it started pouring down. You're like, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> like, this is causing pain to you, mm -hmm. your family. And I think that's where people need to get before they get saved. Most testimonies we hear on Calvary Conversations and in general is, like, they're at the end of themselves. They're sick of mm -hmm. their life. Like, they're sick of the sin and the darkness is exposed. Mm -hmm. I have I hit rock yeah. bottom. And I know that God wanted, he, I needed to hit mm -hmm. rock bottom. Amen. But would I, did I come to realize this? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I just wanted more and more mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. If God wouldn't have chose to save me, I would have never been saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. I would have never have changed my mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I wanted more and more of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't care if it was going to take me down. Mm -hmm. It was taking mm -hmm. me down. And I didn't mm. care, you know, because when you're in that state mm. of darkness, mm. that's all, you know, that's all you have. Mm. There is no light to cling to. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's what I think. Yeah. I think that I never, it's not anything that I decided on my own. Yeah. And you had a lot of people just probably kinda... praying for you, your family <laughs> who are Christian. I'm sure they were oh, yeah. interceding and just praying for you. And that's what, um, we would mm -hmm. encourage people if they have, because we have people we know and family members who are like, who are into that stuff. Mm -hmm. And some people like yeah. yours could, when people are listening to this, can seem like, oh, that's an extreme case. Mm -hmm. I'm only kind of dabbling in it. And it's like, it doesn't matter. It it's doesn't it's matter. demonic mm -hmm. and it's darkness and he'll get you to an extreme or just, but he doesn't care. He'll get little kids just, oh, let's just do it a little bit for fun or a Ouija board. But we've talked to like, Stephen Bancars and stuff about it, like opening the doors to demonic. Yeah. Like you can open the Absolutely. doors. Drugs is a big thing because you said you're you mm -hmm. you did drugs during it. I'm assuming yeah, yeah addiction, yeah. drugs, alcohol, like these things. A lot of times they do open the door because pharmacia, right? With pharmacy mm -hmm. drugs, it's it does open the door. And I think a lot of times people they just think if I don't label myself as a witch, I'm fine. But yeah, even being like little leaven, like a little sin, it grows until you don't mm -hmm. realize like, oh, my goodness, that people are wondering why I'm being so attacked. And you're like, there's so many things in your life that you're opening the door to. So what are some things yeah. you would being out of that would warn people like have nothing to do with that, like stay away, flee from these things? <sighs> so much, <Yeah. laughs> so much. Um I mean, it's it, like I said, witchcraft is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's on social media. Mm -hmm. It's being uh, Hollywood glamorizes mm -hmm. it. Um, and I, honestly, I think too that that's why when people hear my story, they're like, "That didn't mm -hmm. happen." Well, because Hollywood glamorizes it so much to the point to where it's mm -hmm. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's true. It's a real thing that mm -hmm. happened. Um, In horror movies, uh, horror movies is one. Horror mm -hmm. movies. Yeah, because sure. they make it seem like, um, oh, that doesn't really happen. Like, it's just a fun thing. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, like these things. I think Annabelle actually was based off of like a real thing that yeah. someone said, like there was a doll that was yeah. talking to them. So I'm like, demonic. I think people yeah. like this stuff because okay. they think it. they can laugh about it until they start realizing like, oh, oh, no, this actually is real. I think that it's this our sinful yeah. nature, mm -hmm. like we're, we're born into. I really do. I think that. um that we're drawn to mm -hmm. it. Oh yeah. You know, and like how you was talking about how, um, it witchcraft mocks mm -hmm. everything yeah. of God. It absolutely yeah. does. Um, you use Psalms in spell mm -hmm. work. Yeah. Can you explain that to the and, people like what they did with the, cause I remember you talking about like they would read verses and like the Lord's prayer for yeah. something like removing the warts or something. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. Um, so Josh, he, um, he had warts as a kid growing up, pastor Josh, my pastor, Mm -hmm. um, he had warts as a kid growing up and there was this man at the head, at the head of the holler (laughs) that everybody knew. And, um, he performed miracles. Mm -hmm. He, uh, ended up buying what they call buying his warts. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's different ways you can do it. But I I think the way that he done it was, is I think that he gave Josh these coins and said, when you forget about these coins or or you lose them, you won't have any more warts. They'll Mm -hmm. go away. And, and that's what happened. And um, yeah, there's other ways that you can do it. Uh, I think that that's how he done it in this case. Um, and with the Lord's Prayer, uh, there's many different things that you can do with the Lord's mm. Prayer in witchcraft. Mm. Um, you can um, stop unwelcome visitors. Mm. Um, I know of this one where um, the woman would take some of, of her things um and put it in a rag and she would walk her property line, um, holding it like so and pray in the Lord's prayer until she completed her property line and then buried it Mm. and forgot about it. Mm. And then, you know, uh, she wouldn't have any more, you know, unwelcome intruders. Um, and there's other different things that you can do. I mean, uh, you can manipulate that, into making it whatever you want. Hmm. And it is a very uh, damaging Hmm. thing. Uh, I even think how you was talking about, is there anything uh, that I would recommend people staying away from? Uh, Yeah. Even in a lot of, uh, of Christian culture today, Hmm. they think that the uh, Enneagram is okay. They think Hmm. that, um, I mean, they're being okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yoga. Um, they're normalizing Mm -hmm. new age. They're normalizing witchcraft. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's everywhere. You just really have to know, um, what it is to look for. I think that this is, uh, one of the main reasons why, um, God gave us this platform. Mm -hmm. You know, he, we didn't reach out for these podcasts Mm -hmm. or dark holler. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, all this just kind of fell into mm-hmm. our lap. And to be honest with you, when I sit down and I done the first interview with Ward, mm-hmm. I, um, which is the producer for Dark Caller, I, I started laughing after I left the church and I said, I'm not even going to even think about this again mm-hmm. because he thinks I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they think that I'm mm-hmm. crazy. And, you know, he's not going to be calling mm-hmm. us back. Uh, but no. It was the complete opposite. He was absolutely, I mean, completely Mm. in. So down to everybody that has been involved in getting my testimony out there and uh, has helped along the way and been so supportive. And, you know, every single person God has put in my life for a reason. Mm. Um, You know, I think that God really wants... God, I'm going to cry. I always Mm -hmm. cry. (laughs) It's good. It's good. God really wants this to be known. Mm -hmm. So I think people will know how to combat these entities. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's something that's completely real. And there's a lot that we still don't Mm -hmm. know. Um, We have found out that this is something that has been a generational Mm -hmm. curse. Um, This is something that has, obviously, we found out that there was a lineage of witches in my family that nobody even, even, nobody really, I don't think, thought that much Mm -hmm. of it. This opened a door, Mm -hmm. um, what happened at my baptism, to expose all Mm -hmm. of this. We know um, the demon's name. Mm -hmm. And just the way that all of this has, um, has unfolded, um, down to the smallest detail has been God's Amen. plan. Hmm. 
And I think so. that is, I like that you said that it's like a lot of times people don't realize like all these things are sometimes mm -hmm. even it is generational curses because I know that they explain it like with the Israelites, like things are passed down from like the parents and stuff. But how we'd explain yeah. it is, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay in it. Because what <laughs> is sad is a lot of people, why sometimes I'm like, I don't like it when people just go based off, oh, generational, generational. Because then they use that as a like crutch. a crutch or something mm -hmm. to get out of it. Like, oh, this is how yeah. my family is. But like what you experience is like, no, you can be free from that and say like, now as for me and my mm -hmm. house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're not, we're going to break these curses, you know, because sometimes it's just for people. It's um, the sin of like, uh adultery like it's just in the family you just see it all the time just every marriage or um Anger. alcohol just like addiction to alcohol mm. or or drugs or just um fornication like it, you just see this habit and it could even just be the fact of like they just think it's okay but i think there are demonic spirits that know like hey this works <laughs> with this family <laughs> like they are of vulnerable course. to this mm -hmm. yeah and I think people get weird when they hear generational curses, but just to explain it to them, it doesn't have to be anything weird. Like this stuff, what we need to realize is like to witches and stuff, none of this shocks them. They're like, I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I hear de demons yep. talking to me. I hear this. But Christians, mm -hmm. the sad thing is these people are scared to even go into churches and talk because they're like, oh, no, no, we don't mm -hmm. believe that. that. That's not real. And it's like, it is real. Like it's happening, but we can yeah. combat it. Like you said, in like with the power of Jesus and the blood of his like son like of jesus and but i think a lot of times people just get afraid because they see like witches yeah. and stuff as evil like new age mm -hmm. they're not as scared of even though it's just as demonic because satan decide yeah. disguise himself as an angel of light but when people think of like witchcraft now they're making it like oh good witch and white witches but for the most yeah. part they look at it as like evil like darkness mm -hmm. but even new age we've talked about so much that like you're admitting Enneagram, yoga, crystals, all these things mm -hmm. are worshiping these, the creation and these things instead of the creator. And the Bible talks about that. Yeah. So can you explain that? Why do you think people just would rather do these things instead of like, and why is this more appealing, I guess, than just, I know it's hard because the word submission, but like just surrendering to God. Like, why was that for you such a big thing? Like, why do you think it's so, I guess, appealing to people? Um, I I think, I honestly think that it's not so much um, that people are, they don't believe in it. Yeah. I think that because the way that I was raised is just don't talk mm -hmm. about it. Because if you talk about it, you're bringing that stuff, in, yeah. you know into your home. Well, no, it's already there. You just, you know, you don't know how to, <laughs> you don't know how to combat mm -hmm. it if you're not going to talk about it. And, and you don't, you know, you're not open with your pastor or open, you know, with somebody, you, you don't know what to look for. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is a very damning message. Mm -hmm. That's a very damning thing to yes. say to somebody. Mm -hmm. Just don't talk yeah. about it. Um. And I, I think, too, that, um, like how you said, like crystals and stuff. Uh, and, and I thought about this because I also was telling Ward in one of my interviews, you know, about crystals. But I don't think that I really broke it down to explaining why. Um, I have crystals, uh, you know, in my house sometimes, uh, you know, laying around and, and rocks. And, you know, my daughter loves them. And that's okay. Because God put them there on this earth for a mm -hmm. reason. Um, but to know the difference in, you know, a pretty rock and manipulating that pretty yeah, rock. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're manipulating these things um, to do something that you want or for healing or, you know, just for any reason, then it's witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're just, you know having this pretty rock for healing or you're using a Ouija board. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, saging for to saging your home 
and trying to get rid of negative spirits actually bring in yeah. the negative spirits. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly something that's so backward and it's brainwashing. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Um, and there's just so much that, that I wish that I could, I could go on and on about telling people, you know, stay away from this, stay away from that. Um, but what I really want to let people know is, is open your Amen. Bible. What to go to. Amen. You know, what to go to, to, instead of thinking of things to stay away mm -hmm. from, have, have God on your mm -hmm. side, Amen. you know, and then you're not going to, you know, you're still going to experience, like I still experience spiritual warfare sometimes, depression and things mm -hmm. like that, but I know how to Amen. combat them. Amen. You know, it's not controlling Amen. my life anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for God, I would never have that. I'll, if it wasn't for God, I'd be dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And that, that's mm -hmm. what Satan wants to do. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And it, in the, like you said, with Jesus, when he was actually, with the 40 days when he was, you know, fasting and stuff, he mm -hmm. was tempted by Satan. And what did he use? He used the mm -hmm. word of God. Like, mm -hmm. And that's where, that's when he cool. comes to us with these things, using the word of God is so powerful. But I want to go back to mm -hmm. the baptism. So after that, and after that whole experience, like, what happened? Did you start going to church? Did Were you saved? Like, what did, it, what did it look like for you after the baptism? So I went to rehab, and uh, I ended up in another cult. Oh, wow. mm. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, this, what, what I was telling uh, you earlier, um, this was a Christian cult. Mm. They was actually using... Um, somebody's religion to help themselves. It was completely Whoa. a cult. Like as soon as I walked in, these these girls are telling me, you know, that they love me so much and that like it was over mm. done. Mm. Like well, I'm then I'm sitting there thinking like that's really nice, but you don't even mm. know me. You know? Like I don't even know your name and you're telling me that you mm. love me. Mm -hmm. You know? Like it, it was too it it was that and um they would try to um match people in relationships marry them and then send them to start a ministry somewhere else it was all money mm -hmm. um there was nothing no counseling no rehab i mean absolutely nothing that would help um these girls mm. and I don't know really what you guys believe, but I don't believe in um, talking in tongues the way that they were talking in tongues. Mm -hmm. They would talk in tongues, like say we're having a conversation mm -hmm. and this girl would just start talking That's in so tongues. Good. And I was mm -hmm. like, Whoa, no. what? Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I can do it any time. <laughs> no. It's like, you and have I'm to like, read the Bible. Oh. We were just talking about that. First yeah. Corinthians 12. And, well, first Corinthians 14 yeah. talks about Pound if there's an unbeliever, someone who doesn't, they'll think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You're not yeah. supposed to. <laughs> just crack out in tongues yeah. it's not for that so yeah we don't believe that's right yeah no and you know as soon as I, I went there it was kind of like God was showing me like okay well you don't need to be here but I'm gonna this is where I have you to see what Christianity really is mm. yep. before you take your walk mm. with me so you can know what's right and what's mm -hmm. wrong um just how I had to hit rock bottom. God knew that I had to hit rock mm. bottom before, um, before anything. Mm. So, um, I still pray for those girls that was there. I don't, uh, I don't believe the way that they believed at mm. all. It was definitely an occult. Um, and that can be damaging too. Um, if you don't read your mm -hmm. Bible, mm -hmm. I mean, I was a, it, coming out of, uh, out of the occult and went straight back <laughs> into one, and I still knew that that was wow. wrong, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Um, I really think that people can be brainwashed, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what was happening mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So, but when I left there, yeah. <laughs> um, I did come home, and I started going to church. Um, I got into school. Mm -hmm. I go to Liberty University oh, yeah. now. Two years. Um, mm -hmm. For, for psychology, yeah. you did? Yep, for Bible That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a great school. Um, I got engaged. Aww. 
And on Easter weekend. Aww, congratulations. Yeah. I think I saw that Thank on you. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we're moving to North Carolina, so that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, just everything's falling into place mm -hmm. exactly where it needs mm -hmm. to be. Uh, Dark Holler is about to come out, and I've done, uh, you guys have me on your mm -hmm. podcast, and I've done Cultish, and um, it still amazes me. It mm -hmm. really does. I'm like, wow, these people want me to be on their mm -hmm. podcast. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never thought that something like this would happen <laughs> to me. Um, but um, something that that I really uh, want to say before I forget, you was talking about how um, basically, you know, sin is dressed up to be everything that we mm -hmm. desire. Um, and it is. I am. I believe wholeheartedly that the devil wants to keep you comfortable yep. Yep. because if you are uncomfortable, then, you know, you're you're more than likely going to. Your eyes are going to mm -hmm. be open and he doesn't mm -hmm. want that. So, um, yeah, I, I think that that's a lot that I can relate to, mm -hmm. um, growing up and, and even now, uh, you know, there, I have temptation still just because I'm a Christian mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought growing yeah. up. I thought, you know, let's avoid that because I know that I'm not mm -hmm. perfect. Um, well, Christianity, Christianity is actually the opposite. It's because I know I need Amen. a savior. Amen. Um, and I can't save myself mm -hmm. or I would have done it a long time <laughs> ago. So, um, but it just reminded me of, of something that you said earlier. I was, it had it on my brain. <laughs> no, <that's good. laughs> so, I know I'm a bit no, everywhere. No, 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 it's, it's good. Like, I have so much to talk about. So. <laughs> it's good. I'll start talking about one thing and then something else. I'll we'll just. I'll that's start how that's how I it. talk. That's how with do. my questions, how I ask them, I'm like kind of here yeah. or there. You know, it's, it's fun. That's what we tell yeah. people. I'm like, this isn't an interview. This is a conversation. So it's like yeah. as if we were talking to our friend, like getting to know them. Mm -hmm. We're not like, okay, next question. Okay, it's like you just flow. You yeah, just and I go. love that because I am all over the place. No worries. Um, so some of the verses that I wanted to share, Mimi mm -hmm. and I were looking them up. The main verse that just, I feel like, encapsulates everything we even talk about, we always quote this verse, but it's Revelation twelve eleven. They triumphed over him, it's talking about Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. But I was just saying how, like, okay. the cool thing of, like, when we talk about Revelation twelve eleven is the blood of the Lamb, what Jesus did on the cross. And... Jesus, like, he freaked the demons out. Like, they tremble and they mm -hmm. screech when they <laughs> saw yeah. Jesus. They asked to be cast into the, the pigs, right, mm -hmm. instead of the, the abyss. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid. And so I feel like that's also reason why um, in the New Age, when people are, like, getting into all these, um, what is it, when they're in their dreams and, I don't know, sometimes when they're in dreams and they get, like, afraid when they, um, lucid out of body. Dreaming? Lucid dreaming, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. <laughs> they will have to say Jesus because when they say Jesus, they can like get out of it. And so I'm like, what yeah. do people think when they like realize that the name of Jesus, this stuff like stops and that just shows how powerful mm -hmm. it is not to because, you know, people overuse that. They're like, oh, just say Jesus and then everything's fixed. But it really does show us that even with our testimony, Satan hates that. Like he hates it when lives are changed. He hates it when people yeah. like you now can share your testimony. So we've had problems with the internet. So he's trying to do it. Like, <laughs> not that we blame the devil for everything. We don't want to be doing that. Like, oh, everything. Cause sometimes just the internet. But, <laughs> but in this case, I really think. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's why we <laughs> prayed a lot. Cause we're like, pray against this stuff. And that's what we want to talk about. Cause sometimes people think like an exorcism or like deliverance. Cause even Luther, when he did baptisms, People were delivered and there was exor exorcisms and stuff. That was actually the, um, it was Luther's baptism uh, prayer that Pastor Josh wow. used. Praise God. So mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. And so, but the, with the deliverance, like, it's something we should do and like things of being delivered from things till the day we die, like sanctification. Like when, because sometimes yeah. it's good because people have like, my dad, he did it like had his deliverance thing it was on halloween night he remembers and it was like 24 hours or longer mm -hmm. 
that's good, especially for people who it's like they are being attacked with darkness and death and like suicide and things. But when things come up, you should be able to go to a pastor that understands like how to, you know, bind and loose and like pray against these things. Because Mm -hmm. if you don't, like you said, if the church just keeps ignoring it and saying, oh, it's not real. As much as you want to keep saying, oh, like the enemy you're fighting isn't real. It doesn't matter if you say that. If they're shooting at you, (laughs) it's real. You might want to, you can sometimes be like, oh, I just want to pretend it's not real. But it is real. The enemy does want to attack us. And so I I like the verse 2 where it says Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So we need to realize we just think like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm having an issue with this person. and I don't know what it is, but they just seem like there's they're always like angry and um, they're always like just freaking out. And I was actually yeah. reading parts of this book. It's really good. I encourage everyone to get it. Um, Not Against Flesh and Blood by Martin Lo- Lo- uh, Lloyd Jones. And it talks about how like some things with demonic oppression is when a lot of people, when their moods change and they just all of a sudden just yeah. snap. And mm-hmm. that's where I think we need to realize that there's sometimes where people just are in a bad mood, but anger, the Bible talks about, gives the devil a mighty foothold. So when we yeah. are just saying, oh, that's just how I am, like we need to understand and look at it as, no, we are giving place to the enemy and demonic spirits. And we need to understand that we need to hate those spirits. We need to hate all that is part of darkness and pray against Mm -hmm. it in Jesus name. And what are some things that could you explain of when things were delivered or um, other things throughout, I guess, even your walk in Christianity? What does that look like even for you? If there are there things that you have to pray against on your own or how does that look like for you? I love that you, everything that you just brought up, because for me, I think that the anger is yeah. one of them. Um, depression. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I, I, it's that I get angry at myself mm-hmm. um, for being depressed. You know, you nobody wants to feel that yeah. way. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I pray all the time, you know, God, please just lift this from yeah. me. Um and that that's definitely some of the things that that I pray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just starting reading scripture, I that's another thing mm-hmm. people say is always so yeah. powerful. They're getting attacked with thoughts um, like mm-hmm. a suicide or depression or yeah. loneliness even. It's like it's what Satan does is why people are addicted. And I believe those are demonic spirits is because he tells them, oh, yeah. drink some, like drink this or, you know, take this drug or you know, watch this mm-hmm. thing or look at, yeah, look at pornography. He gets you to escape in these things that are momentarily, it numbs it. Yeah, mm-hmm. numbs yeah it numbs yes. it, but then it kills you. At the end of the day, like, yeah. it's opening the door to death. Mm. And we think, oh, Absolutely. this is bringing life and, oh, this is fun until, like, you realize, no, this is bringing death. Like, you should have died. You should be dead right now. Yeah. And so it just makes you yeah. even so much grateful when you've seen what God has delivered you from. Amen. And, like, you you just want to share your story. Like, hey, you guys, he came to set the captives free. You can be free from this. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, absolutely. What, do you, what would you say, Mireya, about when people think, oh, I can't be free. Like, this is just something I'll have to mm-hmm. live with. And just like we we're talking about, like, walking through that each day, mm-hmm. like, deliverance, mm-hmm. reading the word. Mm-hmm. You had the verse in, what was it, Second Corinthians? Um Oh, okay. I don't remember. Was it Second oh, Corinthians? It. Was was it? You read so it. Second Corinthians. I'm gonna read this. Mira gave it to me, but she don't have it. So. <laughs> I don't know. I forgot. Oh, I just <laughs> forgot what I said. Second Corinthians oh. ten five through six. We destroy arguments yeah. and every yeah. lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, mm-hmm. and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I just think I think it's a it's a two sided thing because I mean, um, obviously, like you were saying, um, it's sad that the church doesn't address these things more. It's sad that we as Christians, Mm -hmm. I mean, the world is bold about it. Hollywood's got a a monopoly on this stuff, but we can't step out and speak truth. I think it's Ephesians five eleven that talks about taking no part or having no part in the um, the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead exposing it. It doesn't just stop there and say don't don't do this it says expose them like we need your testimony out there we need these things to be exposed because that's what the enemy he loves to go undercover and so um yes so with second corinthians i love that um in that in the context of that verse, it's talking about spiritual warfare and just those thoughts, those, the, the, what you're experiencing, depression, um, anxiety, whatever, suicidal thoughts, those types of things, when they come to our mind, the way to combat that is with the word of God and to just understand, to have the word written on our hearts, to be memorizing scripture, to be in the word of God and, um, to understand that, uh, like you were saying, like taking every thought captive, not just doing that, but making it obedient, make it obedient to Christ and not going based off of, you know, what we feel in the moment or what seems to be true, but we know what's true and we stand on the word of God and that's what we make our thoughts, you know, submit to. And so I love, um, I love that that's what you do. And, um, um, and I think, yeah, I think sometimes it's a, it's a, it's two things. I think deliverance, I think we complicate it a, a lot of the times we overcomplicate it. We make it seem like, yeah. um, it has, it's this one and done, like this big thing, yeah. like it's done and then boom, it's over. But mm-hmm. again, like it's, this is a process of sanctification and we will be battling with things until we're, we're in glory, you know? And, but that's also not to say that the Lord, you know, like her father and you, yeah, for instance, yeah, like delivered. instantly delivered from, you know, possession or. Um, the power of certain sins yeah. um, but we it's it's that continual walk we have to be diligent to make sure that we're keeping in step yes. with the spirit examining ourselves to make sure we're, we're in the faith and um, and uh, praise God that he who began a good work in us will finish it until the day of completion till the day of Christ and so we have that promise and um, just just um, but yeah like you were saying like deliverance being um, something that we should be seeking continually um, to be delivered from yeah. ourselves our flesh our you know sins and just being mm-hmm. in the word being in prayer confessing so that maybe we may be yeah, healed um, oh, who he who can conceals his sin will not prosper um just just confession prayer being in the word um being connected in church and and things like that but yeah yeah. Yeah. getting accountability i I feel that you know it really is god is is life for me like i have to stay in in his Mm -hmm. word if i don't the only other way is amen yeah and I've been there. I don't want to go back mm-hmm. there. Um, and I, I think it puts it in pers- it has put it in perspective for mm-hmm. me that um, some people think that you know our faith is something that we choose. But for us, it's the essence of life. Mm-hmm. We have to have God because mm-hmm. if we don't have God, we don't have anything. Mm-hmm. And it makes you see too, so, like to make sure you don't just empty yourself, because that's what the new age do: empty yourself yeah. of all these bad vibes and like sage and all this yeah. stuff. But then it's just filled with more spirits, because it talks about that in mm-hmm. um, Matthew twelve uh, forty four. It says, "Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds a house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. But then it goes and mm-hmm. takes um, with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go." and and live there and the final condition yeah. of that person is worse than first hmm. than the first that is how it will be with the wicked generation and so we see that because i yeah. see people they'll get delivered they'll get saved but they don't feel themselves like with the word mm-hmm. and reading the word and getting into a mm-hmm. good church where mm-hmm. they're being held accountable because they're gonna get attacked mm-hmm. with going back like mm-hmm. there's people who have been clean and mm-hmm. for years and years this one pastor he was clean from drugs he actually used to be in like he had was a heroin addict mm-hmm. and then he was doing mm-hmm. this ministry and he felt like right where you think you're strong take heed lest you fall mm-hmm. this yeah. guy gave him his like little pack and stuff and he just put it in his drawer he didn't throw it away or anything like that destroy it and then on a day when he was depressed you know from ministry he just mm-hmm. took it and now he's 
in the streets as a homeless person in the same place that he was a pastor at once. So it's like no one is above going back. Like we always need to look forward in what Christ yeah. is doing and refining us. And so that's where it's nothing to be like, because I think we say I'm be spooked out by that. Like praise God, he brings people in our life and things to keep Absolutely. us. But we also, there's something in us that still can rebel and be like, I, I just... I just feel like this is okay. Like, our flesh. Back to this. Yeah, our flesh. Spirit is wa- and, watch and pray. And it talks Spirit about is it in the Bible so many times, too, where you see in Deuteronomy, Leviticus, um, 1 Samuel, where it talks about divination and witchcraft and all of this is like an abomination to the Lord and how he hates mm-hmm. it. And so when we joke and say, oh, my kid, you know, they can watch Harry Potter, it doesn't affect them, or, oh, it's okay, you can watch these horror movies it's not going to affect you that's wrong like to think that because it hurts god's heart because it's the bible says what does light have in common with darkness nothing we shouldn't be celebrating the dark because that's satan he loves keeping things hidden and comfortable but we need to expose that as christ followers with the word and say hey this is what the bible says because we can't just make up our own thing like i just feel like you shouldn't do it no we need to say this is what the Mm -hmm. bible says it says to not do this because it's an abomination to the lord so that's where we got to encourage people. It's like all of the things are in the word of God. So mm-hmm. stay rooted in mm-hmm. the word of God. Absolutely. I think too that um, I see a lot of that nowadays. Mm-hmm. Well, the, all the Christians are making such a big deal out of the mm-hmm. smallest thing. No, mm-hmm. we're not making a big deal out of the smallest thing. You know, it needs to be a big deal because the smallest thing, I don't, I don't it believe that there's small. a, yeah. a smallest thing or a biggest yeah. thing. I think that it is Amen. all dark. I think Amen. that it is all dark. Yeah. Amen. Um, it all breaks God's And heart. there's um, one of my favorite quotes is um, a quote from Johnny Cash <laughs> that there is no fence you can sit on between heaven and hell. And it is the truth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's not. Hot or cold. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, yeah, you're either all in for the mm-hmm. Lord or Amen. you're not. It's true. And I really think think that that's some that's something that i think Mm -hmm. about Mm -hmm. a lot um so yeah i agree i love that well i'm thankful that we're able to have this conversation like you said because a lot of people they're like i don't want to hear that there's demonic spirits or things going on and i think that's just playing dumb like i feel like people know and they're going to be judged for what they know and even just watching listening or watching this podcast now they know <laughs> um so they will have to give an account for if they're letting family members even in their house doing these things like it's important to understand that you have to protect your household because when you let mm. a little of the sin like like even pornography there's people like i forgot who it was if it was bundy i think it might have been bundy but i forgot who it was but he said that how we start he didn't just start they didn't just start raping and killing and doing all this to women it started with them being like oh i saw a playboy and and then it grows into Mm -hmm. this thing and then to snuff films and all this so it's like as much as we think oh boys will be boys or it's fine like let the girls you know do whatever they want and they can sleep around sorry there's a time here (laughs) but it's like it's it's not okay like we need to expose this and really care that it right it did hurt you growing up and having to go through mm-hmm. that but praise god he works all things together cuz now you can use your story to crush the enemy's head mm-hmm. and you can use this to Absolutely. warn your own daughter you can be like hey mm-hmm. you do not want to go down this road you have to learn from mama's mistakes mm-hmm. learn from and that's yeah. what it says a fool learns from their own or a fool person a fool person <laughs> a foolish person a foolish person <laughs> um they have to learn they by have experience. to learn from experience but like a wise, a wise person. person they learn from others and mm-hmm. so that's my prayer is when people listen to these podcasts and even young people they realize they don't see that we're glorifying darkness and mm-hmm. like oh yeah north you know ha- she had her fun but praise god she's better now <laughs> we can't think of the what yeah. if like or we can't think of oh praise god you're better we need to think and warn people you might not be here you could be if you mm-hmm. went down and you know and you didn't come to the lord like you would probably be dead and in hell so it's like praise yeah. god that we can use even this opportunity to warn people and say hey don't mess with this stuff mm-hmm. it's not worth it it leads to death destruction and hell 
So do you have any closing yeah, thoughts though, for our listeners? Anything that you wish even maybe people would have told you, maybe someone out there who has a kid that's struggling with it, like what would you just encourage them with? To pray. Mm-hmm. That's good. Because that's the only thing that's going to, that's going to help is to pray and that, that God would open their mm-hmm. eyes and change their hearts. Mm-hmm. Because like I said earlier, I mean, it's nothing that I chose. It's nothing. I would have never chose God. Mm-hmm. God chose me. Mm-hmm. He moved you. you know, he, he chose to open my eyes and, and to change my heart. And I would have never chose that. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I thank God every day for pulling me and my fiance out of the darkness. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't have blamed him if he didn't. Mm-hmm. Well, but he mm-hmm. did. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So um, I think it's something to think about. And another thing is um, like how we was talking about, you know, people really need to know um, a- about the devil and and demons and yeah it's real and if you don't if you just don't care about it and you just overlook it because you know you're scared and i never understood that anyways you know how we was talking about um they say jesus to cut to come out of um yeah so and and back with you know uh jesus cast the the demons into pigs (laughs) well they're begging Mm -hmm. him Well, why it never made any sense to me. Why are we so scared of the mm-hmm. demons? I'm not scared of the mm-hmm. demons. He's they should be scared it. of Amen. me <laughs> because of who lives Amen. inside Amen. me. Amen. It's good. So mm-hmm. I think that, that that's great. And um, one thing that I would uh, love for anybody to check out would be Psalms 91. Mm. You're just saying. Yeah, it was just it has been a huge, a huge thing in uh, my life and, and, um, it, it's scripture that definitely helps mm. me. Praise God. So, Amen. And we also want everyone yeah. to check out the film. There's the website, which will be in the description below. But is it re- released yet, or just parts of it? I think. Um, no. The first episode is going to be released at the end of June. Okay. I think we're 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 going for the end of June. Yeah. So, um. That's going to be the first episode. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how many that there is there is going to be, um, and a lot of people have been asked: is is there going to? Uh, they've asked me: is there going to be a book? Is there uh, going? To, is it going to be out on DVD? We don't know about the DVDs. I am writing oh, a book. Wow. Oh yay! <laughs> That's awesome. Praise God. Um, so yes, that is going to come. I don't know how long it's going to take mm-hmm. me. Um, but I definitely want it to be as detailed as possible. Um, I know a lot of these podcasts and stuff, it's hard for me to go uh, so detailed. Mm -hmm. I want to, but you know, it would take us forever. (laughs) Gotta save some for the book. um, Yeah. Gotta save for the book. Yeah. yeah, So, um, yep. Dark Holler will, uh, first episode will be out um, at the end of June. So definitely check that out at darkhollerfilm.com. And Let's just pray that it's going to reach and help as many people as possible because that's what the what the goal Amen. is. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, well, we love that. Yeah. We love that you are here with us, and <laughs> um, we'll just keep continuing to pray for everything that God's doing in your life. Mm-hmm. And also, it's just for anyone out there who their story relates to you. We want to encourage you to you know find a church and just being able to like get help and community Mm -hmm. if there's any one that just feels lonely because that's what satan loves to do he loves to get you when you're Mm -hmm. depressed and feeling all alone and but we need each other Mm -hmm. like we need each other to lift each other's arms up to spur one another and um and if you need help reach out i've had so many people reach out Mm -hmm. to me i'm so thankful for your testimony Mm -hmm. thank you for sharing and you know i really needed it and i get all kinds Mm -hmm. of those messages and that's what makes it true for me so yeah if you need help like i encourage anybody that's listening to this if they need help don't be don't be scared or shy reach out reach out to us we can anytime we can talk about it yeah 
and Any just being us. honest and real like that's why i love you're like honestly like i'll go as detailed as you want mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter because you when hide. you the baptism when you're dying to your flesh mm-hmm. that's that yeah. picture but you're coming out a new creation like mm-hmm. all of that Absolutely. is gone and so that's what we want to tell people is like even though sometimes people get like oh man i'm still struggling with things in the past but yeah that doesn't have to have control over us mm-hmm. like we don't have to give that right. the devil a foothold in our life mm-hmm. and so what i like to tell people too is like if you really do need help like and you feel like there's something because we can confess to the lord but sometimes when i say like get help in community sometimes you need people just holding you accountable like if you struggle with people struggle with like looking at things or pornography get a block on your phone mm-hmm. if you struggle with drinking yeah. like have a friend or someone that would help you hold you accountable or if people are struggling with sleeping with their boyfriend or girlfriend you know, have people hold you accountable to stay and not be alone with them. So it's like we need Mm -hmm. to just admit that we have problems and not have to act all perfect and holy like, oh, I do nothing wrong. We need to lovingly sometimes even rebuke each other if we are in Christ and be like, hey, the Bible says this, you're living this way. So it doesn't feel good in the moment, but the end, right? You're thankful now that you are pulled out of that and Mm -hmm. found out. Romans 3, 23. Mm -hmm. We all sin and fall mm-hmm. short of the mm-hmm. glory of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> but, all right, well, we better let you go. I know we've, like, gone way over our <laughs> We just time. love chatting with you. <laughs> I could talk forever. I feel like I know you. I know it's crazy, but I, I do. I love that your podcast. Like, we end up becoming best friends. We just <laughs> met you, but yeah. that's the, the best thing. It's like a yeah. bunch of sisters because we Amen. all are sisters in Christ. So. Amen. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll have Absolutely. everyone check out awesome. Dark Hollow. Hollow? <laughs> Holla. 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 <laughs> Holla at your girl. Um, and that'll be in the description below. And we'll put all the ways they can also contact you if need be. But thanks again for joining us, North. We had a blessed time. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me. It has been great. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Thanks so much to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. Please check them out in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and see you next week.